people that were selling the stuff said that they would not allow us to extend to come in uh, August, September time. They said, nope, you got to be here at 5 p.m. So we took the time to pull together all of the resources that we had, asking, begging, pleading the Lord to just move um, because we, we were, you know, we did not arrive in the room. We had to go because the building needs to be taken care of. So when we found this place, we put the offer out on it. This place was, I, I like to tell people, it was less than what it would cost to move into that house that night. Mm. All right. Um, and, and for us, that was 15 minutes. <laughs> And so we came, we broke up my heart was fluttering so, so bad. I was like, no, no, you gotta stop. My heart is fluttering so bad. Um, so we came to see it, we shared it with the church, we began to raise the money, and all the way up until the day of closing, we did not have all that money. And the lawyer told us, do not set foot in my office if you don't have that money. Mm. And we were like, okay, we'll be there in the time with the money. And for those who don't know, Pastor, he was like, biting his tongue. We don't have John, not John, Zacharias. Zacharias, he couldn't say anything. Well, God didn't make him, but he told us not to say anything. Um, because he wanted to, he only wanted life to be spoken. Sometimes all of us can get into a place where we should. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that he did. I just told him to don't say a word. Because we had some ideas and we had some things like, don't say it. Well, you just let them do what they're supposed to do. And so um, we had to be at the realtor's office at 3 p.m. At 3 p.m., we had the exact amount that we needed to move into this building. Like she had 
having no shepherd. And then Philippians 2, 5 says, Let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. And then 36 came back, but he saw the multitude, and he was moved with compassion, because he saw that they were weary and scattered, like sheep with no shepherd. And then Philippians 2, 5 says, Let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. And he had compassion on them. Because he saw the multitude. And I started to like, God, what are you saying? And my God, I heard some words this morning back to me over and over again. But what he showed me was that as he was going to every city, and he was going to every town, and he was going there, the multitudes were coming. He began to look out. And he began to see people. He began to see that they were weary. And it wasn't just oh they're tired. No, if you look at another verse, it says that they were harassed and they were helpless. So he looked upon the people, and his mind, he's so concerned about the people and what's going on with them. They were getting beaten up. They were getting battered because the enemy was coming for them. The enemy was constantly coming at them. You got people who are sick. You got people that are going through. You got people who are broke. You got people who have got all this stuff going on. And he looks out at all the people and he sees them and he has compassion on them because he's the only one. He's the only one that's speaking. He's the only one that's healing. He's the only one that's doing. Nobody else. And you know what? The next verse says that he turned to his disciples. So his disciples were right there beside him, but he was the only one. All right. How many times have we been in situations where we look around and we're like, I don't know what to do? It says that he had compassion. He looked out at the multitude and he realized that he was the only one. So the saints were standing right beside him. How many of us are standing right beside him? We're not saying nothing. We're not doing anything. But we're the only, or someone, if it's us, a sign or someone else, they're the only one. Are we going to have the mind of Christ? Are we going to get our minds right so that we can turn back to Philippians 2 5? <clears throat> Let this mind be in you that is also. That we see the people and that we see the hurt and that we don't let someone else do it. That we don't let someone else say it. We don't let someone else pray. We don't let someone yes, else prophesy. Yes. We don't let someone else preach. We yes. don't let someone else teach. Yes. We don't let someone else evangelize. We don't yes. let someone else intercede. Yes. Yes. We don't let someone else pressure. We don't yes. let someone else do whatever yes. it is that has to be done in the church and out of the church. We choose to be the one. Yeah. We choose to be the one to go out to the highway. We choose to be the one to go out to the byway. We choose to be the one that says, it is my God, send me. I will go. And I guarantee you, if every one of us went in this place, we will be able to see a praise of the Lord. Amen. Will you be the answer to the prayer that they need? Because he said, pray to the Lord, Lord of the harvest. Will you be the answer? Will you choose to take the initiative? Will you choose to walk in what God has called you to walk in? Will you choose to look on the people? Not because it was many of them, but it was because they were hurting. Because they were being beaten up. Because they were being abused. Because they were being tormented by the enemy. Will you be the one? Hallelujah. 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 What an awesome word. Will you be the one? I think sometimes uh, the Bible says that uh, let this mind be in you.
sometimes we get so busy looking at all these situations that we don't see what God is saying. We don't see what's happening in our community. Yeah. I have this thing, you know, I, I talk to you about it now for a little bit. Uh, it's one thing that sits in the spirit of Jesus' mind and all that. To get over the receipt of foolishness. Talking to you, but I, I, I thank you for this. But I want to bring up. Sometimes the spirit needs to see you right. in order to move from you. Amen. Amen. And then I noticed that the Bible says that when Peter and John went to prayer that morning at the temple, it says that when they looked on the man there at the open gate, it says they, they looked upon him. Yeah. They needed to see what the situation was before God began to work a miracle. Yeah. That's all I mean. I'm just looking to see what a miracle is. Amen. 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 <laughs> Pastor Child, he wasn't Pastor Child at that time. He was a 
hired him to the city of Atlanta at this time in my life. He was going to work out good against it. You know what I mean? That's what he was like. Good against it. And so, uh, you know, I was just superintendent of the dance of the Manitoba churches the other day, and I was traveling all over the world, being a secretary to the city district and doing this and doing that. And, and just, if I could just spend two hours at home by myself, this is good day. But how many of you know God will bring some people into your life for reasons you won't know to Amen. All right, man. Because when those other people who I was traveling before left my life, those things were still there. Yeah. All right. You need to know you have, you have to treat everybody well. Yeah. Because you never know who you're going to what. Yeah. Who you're going to be one day. That's right. I think you can be the same yesterday. Yes. 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 So what the surgeons do is they go in and over that particular opening, they place a mesh. They place a mesh. They stitch the mesh in. They close you back up, stitch you up, tell them don't pick up anything over five pounds. And I want to encourage you, if you ever have to have a hernia surgery, don't pick up anything. <laughs> <laughs> over five pounds. You don't use vacuums, don't pick up a can of crack, don't use anything. But the, 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 what I'm going to tell you about that is, is that, that mesh is a foreign object. Yes. And it gets placed inside of a wound. That is hurt. Mm -hmm. But over time, when the mesh, when the skin heals over the mesh, that uh, that mesh makes the inside stronger. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So I met Pastor, Pastor uh, Dixon at a time in my life when, when I wasn't high on weight. All right. All right. I met him at a time in my life when, when, I, when I had an open wound. Yeah. And meeting Pastor Dixon was like the mesh yeah. that got placed on the inside. All right. Because now that the skin is healed, come on, Sam. Yeah. All right, now. Now that the skin is healed, I still have the mesh. Yeah. All right, yeah. And my insides are strong. Yeah. 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 Ye
And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, <clears throat> and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. So Jesus goes about the cities and the villages and the townships, and he goes into the churches, which we call synagogues, and he begins to teach and he begins to preach about the gospel of the kingdom, right? So the thing about Jesus is he doesn't stop there. Because ministers today, we love to teach and we love to preach, right? Now, but unfortunately, there are too many ministers in the world today who stop right there. I would much rather be the teacher or the preacher who heals sickness yes. and diseases yes. as opposed to having the flowery word of man's wisdom yes. and preach and teach. Yes. I want to be the miracle work, yes. right? not just the work. Right. Tell us about it. You, you want to be a worker in the church, but you want to be the worker that's got an anointing. Yeah. You want to be the worker that if, when you stop back and they say, Sister So and So, can you pray for my child who's in prison so that they can be delivered? Right. Sister So and So, can you pray for my father who's got cancer because every time you pray, Too many people are scattered. Right. Too many of our family members have fainted. Yeah. 
And too many of our friends have what? Say that. Say, even the saints of God yes. have yes. begun to faint. Yes. Even the saints of God yes. have begun to scatter. Yes. And so what we have to do is we have to be very careful because it's very important for you to have a shepherd. Yes, it is. It's very important for you yes. to have a pastor. Yes. It's important because if you do not have a covering, a shepherd or a pastor, you will eventually begin to faint yeah. and to scatter. Yeah. Right? And so the Bible says that, 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 that uh, 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 how shall they hear without a preacher? Uh -huh. You cannot go to and fro and not have any accountability. Uh -huh. uh, this is if you hold a position in the church. Do you mind if I pass it for a second? If you hold the Lord said, if you hold a position in the church, I'm doing, I'm doing this for the, the, the pastor of the house. If you hold a position in the church and you find out that you cannot be where you normally are supposed to be, you know uh -huh. yeah. All right. it is protocol to text, call, message, email, or carry your message, your pastor. Yeah. And let them know, Pastor, I'm not going to be in the service tonight. You're going to get on your video board because I have another obligation. Now, you're not going to get you're not going to get thrown under the bus. He's not going to bring a curse on you. But it's just common curse. All yeah. right. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Now, yes, so try, try not showing up for work. <laughs> <laughs> and then not informing you about it. All right. All right. Yeah. You don't have a blank slip on your desk when you return. <laughs> Too much of everybody needs to have. Everybody needs to have. And then every pastor needs a pastor to come to their church and tell the saints that they need to have. Jay-Z's language. 
he's the only one who knows how to work the baptism. That's good. But God, he likes especially when he knows. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Jesus didn't say the hardest truly is plenty, but the specialist of you. Yeah. <laughs> he said the hardest truly is plenty, but the what? Labor. The laborers are few. The laborers are few. The labor is somebody that will go and make God say something. Yeah. Yeah. It's like what Pastor Jason said. The labor is somebody that when God says,
don't feel like you're, you're, you're able to sing or, or do something uh, that is useful to the pastor, what well, I say to you? Every pastor in here will feel good when you're not here. The thing that the pastor wants most from you as a member is not your name. It's not your ability. And really, it's, it's really not your time. If you want to give us energy, it's just give us some stand. S-T-A-N-D. Yes, Remain standing through your storm. Yes. Remain standing through your heartbreak. Do not quit God when trouble comes. We are so funny. We don't quit our job, but we quit God. We don't not show up for work on Monday, but we don't show up for church on Sunday. God is looking for real leaders. The best thing we can do for Pastor Dixon and Pastor Dixon is to remain standing. Just do it. You can do it because you're here tonight. You made a conscious decision to do what God wanted you to do. Come on, Pastor. If there's anything that Pastor Sister Dixon said and that, or that I said that has ministered to you tonight, we want you to come to prayer. We're not going to pray without prayer. And remember, less is more. Less is more. We're just going to lay hands on you. We're going to touch and agree with you. If you have sickness in your body, I want to tell you that God is a healer. I told you I would much, much rather be a healer of sicknesses and diseases than I would have been in the presence of the Lord. If you need prayer, If there's anyone here, even as the altar is open, if there's anyone here, you're not saved. You do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But you want to, you want to make a change tonight. Tonight can be the first day of the rest of your life. Why don't you take a step out? Make a move for God. If you want to change, he wants to change. Tonight is the night. Now is the opportunity. Is everybody lift their hands? We're going to pray for them. Amen. If you'd like to come, you can come. Hold it. The altar is open. If you'd like to come for prayer, you can come. Thank you, Jesus. The altar is open. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You want to be a laborer? You can come. Thank you, Jesus. You want God to use you? You can come. You've been waiting on God to do something, and you haven't heard an answer from him. Why don't you come? We'll touch you, we'll be with you, and Jesus.